Owen T. Carroll Field on the campus of Seton Hall University for men's college soccer on the Big East Digital Network. Fall has finally arrived in South Orange, New Jersey, and the Seton Hall Pirates are hosting the Creighton Blue Jays in men's college soccer. Welcome everybody to Redone O&T Carroll Field, the brand new digs at Seton Hall, the perfect setting for two teams coming off Big East Conference victories. This is going to be a big matchup between these two teams. You look at the all-time series in just a short time, Creighton one victory here at O&T Carroll Field, but Seton Hall taking the last game on this field. It should be a fantastic matchup here today, and you look for Creighton. They're going to be led in midfield by Tashiro Udai. Coming off a Big East honor week, he's going to play deeper in this game and try and control things for Johnny Torres' side on the flip side for, Steven, for Seton Hall. Stephen Elias has done it all this season and will be asked to do it once again to lead the line and to create for the Seton Hall team. We've got a big matchup coming up for you in just a moment here on the Big East Digital Network. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, metropolitan, and global university, we are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John's story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, metropolitan, and global university, we are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Thank you. 
You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. for this Creighton side as they like to push those fullbacks into the attack and create opportunities in the overloads down the wings. For Seton Hall, this is going to be a tough task. One of the few times you go into a home game expecting to lose the possession battle. But for Seton Hall, coming off a big conference victory against DePaul in their last game, a lot of confidence in this Pirates squad. 2-1 win against DePaul in the last game. A 4-1 win at NJIT in the game before that. Free kick coming up here for Seton Hall. James Boot, the English midfielder out of the Bournemouth Academy. In his first year in college soccer will stand over this one with his right foot. Creighton with all 11 players back to defend this one. Boot serves it in, hit low. And clear it away. And Tashori able to get it all the way out of danger. Johnny Torres' side. Mentioned in the open. Redone Owen T. Carroll. Field brand new turf. Top of the line along with redone bleachers and press box. This facility still some work to be done. So there'll be more seating added. As well as permanent bathrooms alongside the stands. But for the Seton Hall team a chance to put their stamp on this new facility here early on in its history with what would be a keynote victory against a Creighton side receiving votes in the top 25 in the United Soccer Coaches poll as well as in the RPI. Andrea Borg has that one knocked away. One of the few freshmen in this starting lineup for this Seton Hall team under Andreas Lindbergh, his second year as the head coach of the Pirates. Lindbergh, originally from Sweden himself, came over to the U.S. to play college soccer. As Borg gets to the end line, knocked down in the middle and put out for a corner kick for Seton Hall. It 
was the number 10, Argeri. The Italian sneaking in there at the near post, one of the many LIU Post Division II transfers on this Seton Hall team that Andreas Lindbergh has brought over with him. Corner kick served in by Boot. Bodies go down in the box, play continues, and then we get the whistle. First whistle of the game for our head referee, Mike Stutt. His assistants, Michael Andreasio and Dave Berkowitz. And our fourth official, Greg Muss, in this one. These two sides, a lot of talent in these teams, especially in their goalkeepers. For Creighton, a force change four games ago in Colin Valdivia. He has held down that spot very well since entering for Paul Cruz. Cruz not even training right now. So for Valdivia, he knows it's his spot as a senior, just his second year making an appearance in his college soccer career out of California, but he has been phenomenal for Johnny Torres' side early on. Chance to charge forward here. Argeri gets onto his right foot and that deflected cross will go out for another corner kick. So another set piece opportunity here for Seton Hall. See the big bodies coming forward from the back line. Good options to get on the end of this one. Eden O'Leary. Move a Fredrickson in the box as well. This one floated to the back of the six. Headed away bravely from Torsh Torstron. And now cleared up the line. Tremonti heads it back in to the attack and now so we'll go all the way back for Seton Hall. Pressure put on. Hawkinson not going to make anything easy for this Seton Hall back line. Andreas Nota in this game. As Congo puts that one out. Jerry back into the feet of Alseth. Born Alseth transfer out of Duke University. Originally from Norway. He's locked down the starting spot in central midfield for this Pirates squad. Today getting the job alongside Boot. Young freshman, an opportunity to control a little bit of the possession in central midfield. It's been a perfect start to this one for the home side. They continue to put on pressure, ball comes in. That one will go right out off the foot of Elias. And out for the goal kick. Good dangerous run there though for Seton Hall. They know they have to be effective when they do get into the attack. They do have some danger on the bench in this one. And C.J. Teebling, as well as Carlton McKenzie. Two of the dangerous front runners. Teebling coming off a goal against DePaul. Has been working his way back from a broken foot he experienced just before preseason. So not full match fit, because he's finally healthy. So the Seton Hall coaching staff has had to be careful with him. Gibson goes wide there. Eunice Budadi, out at that right back spot. So he wants to keep an eye on throughout this game. Looked like a foul there against Tremonti on Torsten. No call made, and we continue on. No mistake there from Mitchell. The freshman left center back getting the start alongside Bryce Gibson for Johnny Torres' side. He's experienced center backs dealing with some injuries. So Mitchell 
locking down a starting role in his freshman year. Denver, Colorado native getting a seventh start here. Flying forward now is Engel King. Closed down, the slide tackle made. And pushed out by Hugo Keller. Keller getting his second straight start in his freshman year out of Norway. Solidifying things at the left back spot. It's going to be a focus for this Seton Hall team. And you look at the keys to the game in this one for Creighton. They know they're going to create opportunities. They've been dangerous every game they've played, but just two one goal victories in conference play against Villanova and Marquette. They've got to be efficient with the opportunities they create. And on the flip side for Seton Hall is trying to limit those chances. The bad giveaways, especially when Creighton presses high, they're going to commit numbers forward. They're happy to counter press for long stretches of time off of that high up the field. If you give it to them easily, if you take too many chances in your own final third in possession, you could be handing this Creighton team an easy goal and they're never easy to come back against. Receiving votes in the top 25, as I mentioned, for this Creighton Blue Jays side. 28th in the RPI right now. Third highest in the Big East. It's been a bright start to the year for the Big East Conference, of course. As Georgetown fought back to a victory earlier today. The highest ranked team in the conference, St. John's, off to a bright start. As well, big switch of the field there. Chance to come forward now. Keller has it knocked away back to the feet of Borg. For an opportunity to create here from Elias. Goes out wide, clipped to the far post. Elias with the header. And in to the safe hands in the end of Valdivia. Elias has played a little bit of everything in this season for Seton Hall. An idea he might start at fullback coming into the year, but when CJ Teebling out has been a starter up top, this game playing a little deeper in that central midfield position. Allowed to make runs like that. Big year for the NC State transfer. Coming back home, a Rye New York native. He's a grad student, so one year left to play college soccer. Even Elias originally out of the Red Bull Academy. Familiar playing his soccer in New Jersey. Emil Corriecci, native of Paris. France hitting the face there. We have throw in for this Creighton side. Blue Jays, one of the soccer powerhouses in the country. They have been to five college cups, 14 Sweet 16s in the NCAA tournament. Of course, their head coach, Johnny Torres, the former National Player of the Year, as well as an the first ever soccer inductee in the Missouri Valley Conference Hall of Fame. He's in the Creighton Hall of Fame as well. And in his first year as a head coach, taking over for the legend Elmar Bolovich, who he worked under as an assistant 12 years. At Creighton as an assistant after playing out his professional soccer career, both in Major League Soccer, USL, and MISL. Torres is looking to put together another strong Creighton squad. Talk to people around the country who have played against this team and watched this team play. The easiest way to describe them is they're not a team that will ever beat themselves. No weaknesses. A high ability to play in possession, understanding across all 11 players, as well as some substitutes that have been forced into the team because of injuries and have earned more time over the course of this year. Creighton team very much in the mold of Johnny Torres, a no-nonsense coach who believes in playing in possession. 
creating opportunities through quick passing. Borg drops this one back. Keller will go back to the feet of the Italian goalkeeper, Andreas Nota. Nota started every game of the season so far. As he did last year for Seton Hall, over 1,300 minutes last year. Two-time Big East honor roll award winner. This one laid off into the feet of Tremonti. That's a good idea there in the attack for Seton Hall. Rogeri trying to lay that one back. Conga dumps this one up high. Hawkinson over his own head. Well done there. Espelita drives that ball in. It only met the defender in Keller. Beautiful ball from Hawkinson to release down that wing for Espelita. He's really grown into his own here in his sophomore year. Johnny Torres saying before the game that he's taking control of that left midfield spot. It's allowed. Torres to be more flexible this season with Tashiro than he expected. Tashiro starting much of the season up top alongside Hawkinson and then deeper in midfield in this game because of unfortunate news as Charles August, the freshman out of Montreal who had solidified central midfield early in this season, is now out for the rest of the year. A major knee injury. So Tashiro will take over in central midfield there, the Tyler Junior College transfer. <laughs> Tyler, alumni on both sides of the field here today for these two teams. Tashiro out of Japan has quickly become a fan favorite at Creighton. They're starting 16 games last year. Coming off a Big East Offensive Player of the Week award for his golden goal against Tulsa. He serves this one in to the far post for Gibson. And now headed away by Alseth. In a battle there, Borg comes away with it. Budawi closes him down. Blue shirts everywhere. Borg somehow gets away. And then a pull of the shirt and the whistle blows. Beautifully done there from Andrea Borg. Looked like he was closed down, surrounded by blue shirts. And he somehow wiggled his way out of that one. Fredrickson floats this one over the top. He'll find his teammate in, Argeri. The Italian going to work on Conga. Another Tyler transfer. Ball here and knocked away off the cross from Boot. And then saved in the end from Val Valdivia. Good end-to-end -end action right now here at ONT Carroll Field. David Goss on the Big East Digital Network with you. It's the Seton Hall Pirates and the Creighton Blue Jays go to battle here. Creighton 2-0 in conference play in Johnny Torres' first year as head coach. Medellin, Columbia native, taking over his alma mater. After being a long-time assistant coach one of the most successful programs in the country. The flip side, Andreas Lindbergh. Going to lead Seton Hall in the Big East and try and qualify for a Big East tournament, if possible, for this group. He's brought in 12 changes this year after 14 changes last year. So he remakes this program in his own image. They're coming over. He's a longtime head coach at LIU Post. National championship contender consistently in Division II. Under his 12 years as coach, seven conference championships, seven NCAA tournaments. He's at Southampton College out on Long Island before that, where he played his college soccer. Take a look at Johnny Torres, sitting on what are the 
beautiful new seats along the bench here at ONT Carroll Field. As I mentioned, first season as a head coach, but one of the brightest soccer minds in the country. And if you talk to anyone who played college soccer in the mid to late 90s, they'll tell you one of the best players in college soccer history, unquestionably the best player of his era, won a National Player of the Year award when it was separate between the Herman Trophy and the Missouri Athletic Club. He won both of those in the same year. Back in 1996, taking Creighton to the College Cup. 46 goals and 36 assists in his career. First round super draft pick in 1998 by the New England Revolution, where he played for four seasons. Fantastic player and a fantastic coach. What a luxury for Creighton to go from a legend in Bob Warming to a legend in Elmar Bolovich and now immediately have someone who understands the program and can take it to new heights even in Johnny Torres waiting in the wings. No kicks cross goes out, so it'll be a goal kick. It looks like Creighton choosing to press high here and force Seton Hall to go long. Seton Hall wasn't sure if Creighton would press off the initial goal kick or would wait for a pass or two to use as a trigger. Seton Hall forced to hit it long. And over the head of Elias. To Shorey's header in the wrong direction. Argeri lays it down for Borg. Back into the feet of Argeri. Elias trying to turn, gets it to Borg. Borg in an offside position. And that chance won't count. And the Seton Hall coaching staff is furious with that call. It looked like Argeri, or excuse me, looked like Borg came from behind the play. The offside flag was not called, but a goal kick was given. And that's the frustration from Seton Hall, as they're saying if play was allowed to continue, that should have been a corner kick. We play on here. The sun starts to set. The lights already on. Conga flying forward. Beautifully done here from Creighton. Conga's cross is blocked. A second one knocked down in the box and cleared away by O'Leary. And now Borg going to create going back the other way. Pallotta doesn't want to get called for the foul in midfield. He lets Borg go. Down the left side now. Curry Icha. And the Frenchman's cross is blocked and then the foul will go against him. Good soccer here. Intense stuff for these two teams to open it up in the first half. We've got our first substitute getting ready to come on. Dominic Briggs will be the man for this Creighton side, a freshman out of Wisconsin, has started the bulk of the games this season for Johnny Torres at that right midfield position that Engel King's in. Interesting to see what Coach Torres chooses to do here. Andreas Lindbergh. Has to be happy to start here for Seton Hall. They've not given any easy opportunities to Creighton. They've made them work and they've shown their threat the other way. A bright start for Argeri. Number 10 playing at the center forward position for Seton Hall. Senior out of Genoa, Italy. Played alongside in some Serie C teams before coming over to the United States under that man, Andreas Lindbergh, originally at LIU Post, and now here at Seton Hall. Lindbergh in just his second year. The Malmo, Sweden native. Looking to put his fingerprints on this Seton Hall program. Some injuries made it difficult early on in the season, but some really close games on the road to start the year at some power teams in Florida Gulf Coast and Florida International. Both one goal losses 
on the road down south to nationally ranked squads. And a one goal loss to Providence on the road to open up conference play. Has belief in the squad that they have enough against the very best to get over the line. And tonight an opportunity to prove it against the top 30 squad in the Blue Jays. Espelanza's ball down the line. Hawkinson will chase. Nota here under pressure. And Elias, the header along. And the flag goes up against Argere. Elias, the captain, had time to bring that one down in midfield. You can see for Creighton, the trigger's changing. Sometimes stepping off, allowing Seton Hall to knock it around. Other times pressing high from all angles. That one blocked out by Keller. Way through this first half. Creighton will make the first substitution of the game. It'll be Dominic Briggs coming on for, interestingly enough, Tor Trostin. So we'll see if Briggs slots in underneath Hawkinson or if Engel King slides into the middle. This one thrown into Engel King. He tries to bike that cross in. It's off a defender. Gibson steps high to win it back and Keller will let this one float out. Briggs and his twin brother Cameron, both a part of this Creighton squad. Cameron Briggs here today, but dealing with an injury. Dominic in his redshirt freshman year, two goals and an assist. Briggs his first touch on the ball. And pressure on that far side. Put down by Budawi. Interchange there, Budadi. Not able to keep possession for his side. Now Gibson brings it down. Bryce Gibson, Sporting KC Academy alum out of Lee's Summit, Missouri. When he's been healthy, has been a lockdown starter for Coach Torres. This is his sixth start of the season. Still working his way back from injury. Slowly worked his way into the starting lineup year after year at Creighton. Didn't start in 20, didn't play in 2015, didn't start a game in 2016. Started 11 in 2017 and scored his first goal last year to clinch the Big East regular season title. And now wearing the captain's armband here in his senior year. Espelanta can't keep possession. Borg gonna restart it the other way. Ball gets back to the feet of Andrea Borg. Early cross played in. It's knocked down and just wide. A big save when called on. Valdivia has not done much in this game. A lightning quick counterattack. Borg recognizes the early ball into his teammate, the Frenchman Camille Correacci. And Valdivia comes up huge with that save to keep his team level on the road. Boot will serve this corner kick in. He's taken every set piece so far. We've seen him float it to the far post a couple times. Dangerous ball at the near post. Still alive in the box. Elias first one to it. Back out wide for Boot. Second chance to cross. Puts it on the far post and Gibson heads it away. Big collision there, and the foul will go against the home side. And Torborn all Seth, and the first yellow card of the game will be shown for all Seth. Big collision there in midair with Dominic Briggs for the Trondheim Norwegian native. It's grad student year transferring over from Duke. Made 29 appearances over his four years. His brother Oyvind, 
a four-year lockdown starter at Syracuse just a few years ago. All ACC eventual draft pick by Toronto FC. All Seth, an experienced college soccer central midfielder. Everything that's gone right so far for Seton Hall has come through the feet of Andrea Borg. Seton Hall is getting ready to make their first set of substitutions in this one. They're going to make a change in central midfield with Alex Pazetsky and two changes in the attack with Carlton McKenzie and CJ Tiebling getting ready to come on. Two of the best attacking players, if not the two best on the roster for Seton Hall. They've struggled with injuries. So, Ajeri, Alseth, and Koriachi all coming off here as McKenzie, Tiebling, and Pazetsky go on. The way at the near post by the defense and cleared. And now, Gibson looking to push his back line up. Pazetsky here, it'll be a like for like change in central midfield for Alseth. You expect to see McKenzie down the right wing and Tiebling will go up top in place of Argeri. CJ Tiebling a goal in the last game against DePaul. Six goals, two assists last year, was second all Big East. Scored two goals in his college soccer debut against Army. It was a bright spot for the Jarna Sweden native in his first year in the United States. The first thing that pops off the screen when you see him is just his physical ability. Over 200 pounds of muscle. Pure speed when he gets running. It's dangerous with both feet if he gets put through. Seton Hall's been successful so far in this game. They've kept the ball down on the ground in the attack. With Tiebling, they have a tendency to look to go over the top fairly quickly because of his speed and physicality. Be interesting to see if they can play through his feet a little bit here to close out this first half. Create some opportunities that way. Keep some control of this game. It's been the perfect start for Seton Hall. As Creighton have struggled to put the pressure on offensively. Hasn't allowed them to press high and create opportunities. So Shiri sprays this one wide. Briggs now coming in field. Puts it wide. Udadi, his cross is blocked down. It'll go out for the corner kick. It'll be Paul Lott to take this corner. Experienced central midfielder in Cuba, Paul Lott. Started over 45 college soccer games in his three years on Creighton's campus. He'll serve this one in. Clip to the far post. Nota can't get to it. Hits the outside of the post and goes out. A huge opportunity there falls to Luke Mitchell, the freshman out of Denver, Colorado. As Nota backtracking was out of position. That one was on frame. It was probably headed for the goal. Andreas Nota. Has come up huge for this Pirates squad throughout his two years with the group. As you can see, the construction still going on. The baseball stadium behind us, but the soccer field laid down perfectly and ready to be played on. Brand new turf. Some upgrades to both the benches as well as the stands and all around, the amenities for fans as well. Seton Hall under a new coaching staff. 
new facilities, getting ready for the future and ready to compete in what has become the soccer powerhouse conference in the Big East. At times four or five teams out of the Big East qualifying for the NCAA tournament. Borg here with some space to the feet of Boot. Boot plays one over the top for McKenzie who tries to bring it down. The header over the goalkeeper and what a goal! The Pirates knew they had some weapons on the bench. It was a matter of when they tried to use it. And Carlton McKenzie comes up huge with his first goal of the season as the Pirates take the lead at home. McKenzie, he's got size, speed, and skill. He holds off Conga. Takes that first touch off the thigh to set himself up. And then the understanding, the creativity there to not wait for that ball to drop a second time and allow Mitchell to close on him. But to hit the header over the top. Looks like the assist will go to James Boot. His second of his career. Seton Hall, they've been the better team throughout the first half. And now the home side has a deserved one goal lead. We expect now to see this Creighton team turn the screws. McKenzie dealing with an injury. Birmingham, UK native. One of the transfers from Tyler. That one comes into the middle. Three goals last year. Had 10 goals at Tyler, including the game winner in the national championship. And of course, Yudai Tashira was a part of, as well as Musa Kanga. It was nice to see those players give each other a little bit of a hug before the game. And Kanga fully aware of what McKenzie's capable of. Was not able to hang, handle the English wingers. Tishori's down behind the play here. Got kicked in that battle with Tremonti. And now play stop to allow him to get back to his feet. Yudai Tashiro, Tokyo native. At the golden goal against Tulsa to win 4-3 in overtime last week, as well as two assists over the course of the week. He is part of what is a very international squad for this Creighton Blue Jays team. Is Tashiro. Players from all corners of the world, South America, all across Europe, as well as South Africa and Congo. And of course, some Central American natives and Espelanta, a Costa Rican U17 international. As Briggs puts this one in, it's knocked down in the box. It was Espelanta's shot. For Creighton, they were hoping to have Mexico City native in Pepe Sejudo, a part of this team out of the Levante Academy. Was supposed to pull the strings as the number 10, an injury to his groin before the season. Put him out for the entire year for the Blue Jays. That is the present and future of college soccer. International heavy rosters. Heavy amount of players from the UK, Germany, as well as Scandinavia. Of course, a number of players from around South and Central America. Johnny Torres was out of Medellin in his day. All down the line there for Polat. Clearance away by O'Leary. Eden O'Leary out of Tel Aviv, Israel. Part of what is a massive international group for Seton Hall. Over 12 players from 
from across Europe, as well as South America. Run with a Swedish head coach, an English assistant coach. Who's gonna expect to see a number of players and Scandinavian players and British players have been so successful over the last few years, both in college soccer, then moving on into Major League Soccer and USL in the United States. And to see that pathway grow, players like Julian Gressel and Dominic Dwyer, see the opportunity that exists for yourself. This one goes wide for the danger man in Borg. Borg flies forward, Maltese Youth International, into the feet of Elias. Our goal scorer, McKenzie, he gets on his horse, 1v1, flying forward, trying to cut inside, and has it knocked away. Beautifully done there by Duda Budadi. Another one of the international players, and now Budadi flying forward. The Moroccan Youth International sprays one for his fullback partner in Congo. Hawkinson, you see outstretched arms. It's not options right now for a Creighton team that's normally so good in their movement off the ball, so quick in possession. And as a team, there are many easy counterattacking opportunities to Creighton, and it has forced a struggle for the Blue Jays. Local sophomore JP Marin checks on here. Marin's been a starter for most of the season. It's two assists already this year, the top 100 recruit out of the Red Bull Academy. For Seton Hall with Teebling and McKenzie coming back. Just adds to their depth and options to allow a player like Marin to come off the bench late here with some fresh legs to close out this first half. Remember in college soccer, every player subbed out in the first half, allowed to return again in the second half. Last substitution. Slow it down. Looks like for the Pirates. Sean McLeod coming on. Scotland grad student transfer from Notre Dame. Comes on for Andrea Borg. It's been a common pattern for Coach Lindbergh's staff to bring McLeod on for Borg. Bring a little extra energy to those wings. McLeod four goals, three assists in his Notre Dame career. One of the Rangers and Aberdeen Academies. Claude from Troon, Scotland. Don't know where that is, but figured I'd tell you. Musa Congo will have some questions for himself and from his coaching staff at halftime. As he, alongside his Center back partner in Luke Mitchell. Center back in Luke Mitchell. Who were beat by McKenzie on the lone goal so far for Seton Hall. Just about five minutes ago. Here at Owen T. Carroll Field. The Pirates taking the one goal lead. Everyone across the Big East will have their eyes on this one. It's always tough to go on the road in conference and get wins, but this Creighton side still favorites coming into this game. Mistake on that header back, and Congo finally gets it to his goalkeeper. wins the first header. Mitchell under pressure and now the foul. Earned there by Tashiro. Quiet game for Tashiro so far. He's been forced to play a little deeper than Coach Torres will like. 
Expect to see this Creighton team come out in the second half flying. As Tiebling now is off to the races. 1v1 with the freshman. Beautifully done there by Mitchell. Recognizes the long touch out in front of Tiebling. It steps in at the right time. Now McKenzie brings that one down. Really cross played in. Headed away by Gibson. McClaw in possession now. Another cross played in towards Tiebling. Goes over his head. Marin trying to run it down. Batadi plays that one up. Sneaks through to the feet of Hawkinson. Hawkinson, big switch into the path of Briggs. 1v1 now with Keller. Briggs back to the top of the box. Polat shot. Tipped over the crossbar by Nota. Briggs putting that one on a plate, allowing Polat to step into it. He got his shoulders over that ball. Seton Hall was fortunate. Nota was on alert to get enough on that one to put it over the crossbar from the goalkeeper out of the Italian capital of Rome. Tashiro now. He goes short with this corner. As Palanta back into the feet of Tashiro. Floated to the far post now. Mitchell runs that one down. To the feet of Engel King. Mitchell's in an offside position. On that return pass from Engel King. And a sloppy performance here from Creighton to the credit of Seton Hall in this first half. They haven't given anything away. We talked about the keys to the game. Avoiding bad giveaways, making the game easy for Creighton off their press and counter press. Seton Hall hasn't done that. It's made this day more and more difficult for Creighton. And then you get a moment of brilliance from McKenzie to put yourselves in front. Tremonti steps forward here and wins possession. Tiebling finds Pazetsky. Now Boot. Seton Hall put their foot on the ball here the final minute and a half of this first half. Control the game a little bit. They did so for large stretches of this period. They won the possession battle in this first half. Kenzie back to Tremonti. Ball clipped over the top four. One Claude from Boot. And Conga tries to shield that one out. And McLeod at least forces it to be a throw in rather than a goal kick deep in the Creighton half. Shiro with the long clearance. Gets up to Engel King. Polat. Gonna restart the attack. Boots tackle. Looked like he was gonna get away with it. Deemed a foul now with 30 seconds left. Should be the final kick of the half. As now the clock correctly will be held here. Final few moments of this first half from Mike Stutt. Tashiro will serve this one in. Mitchell and Gibson in the box as targets. This one hit right at Briggs. Headed along. Keller the first one to this. Tashiro not getting the movement on that ball he wanted. It curved out on him. Away from the box. Ten seconds, nine, the final 10 eight, seconds of this first seven, half to be played. Six, ball floated five, in. Knocked down four, Tashiro's opportunity. Three, and he never gets over three, that one. And that's the story of the first half. Frustration for Creighton, elation for Seton Hall. A perfect first half for Andreas Lindbergh's side. And that man, Carlton McKenzie, slowly returning from injury. Back with a bang here today. His first goal of the season. The lone strike in this one. As the Seton Hall Pirates take a promising lead into halftime. We'll have your men's soccer wrap as well as our second half coming up in just a few moments here on the Big East Digital Network.
We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. College soccer season has hit into high gear. Let's take a look around everything in the Big East with Megan Caffrey and John Fanta. Welcome to the Big East Fall Sports Update. I'm Megan Caffrey, joined alongside John Fanta. Women's soccer wrapped up their first weekend of conference play, and so we are officially in full swing of fall sports conference play. Several clean sheets, and the teams that were picked near the top of the conference poll lived up to their billing. Georgetown handling business, Butler going on the road and winning 3 nothing. I'm curious to see those two teams, they're so strong. Welcome into the Big East Fall Sports Update. I'm Megan Caffrey, joined alongside John Fanta. Women's soccer wrapped up their first weekend of conference play, and so we are officially in full swing of fall sports conference play. Several clean sheets and the teams that were picked Near the top of the conference poll lived up to their billing. Georgetown handling business, Butler going on the road and winning 3 nothing. I'm curious to see those two teams, they're so strong defensively. Who's going to be able to score on them? It's going to be fascinating to see throughout league play. You were also on the call for the Villanova game. What stood out to you in that game? This was a game that Xavier dictated in the first half. Musketeers came out, they outshot Villanova 5-1, to one, and they play a 3-5-2 system, which is different. It creates a wrinkle in the league, and Nate Lee's done a really nice job there. Already seven wins on the season, but Villanova can get you quickly on the counterattack, and Bryce McEnroy struck. Tennessee transfer, so you think about she comes over from the SEC, and she's given Villanova's offense a boost leading the team with five goals on the year. And for Xavier on the other side, Megan, they have a crucial weekend. Mm -hmm. Home to Creighton, home to Seton Hall. You have got to have short memory in this conference. Now, John, you mentioned Butler's defense a little bit mm -hmm. before, but what stood out to me this weekend was their offense. They had a 3-0 win over Seton Hall. And an interesting stat to me that stands out is in the conference, they're just behind Georgetown in goals per game that they're averaging. Georgetown is averaging just over two and a half, and Butler's right behind them, just over two goals per game. So I think their offensive power is really coming into play right now. They have five players with two or more goals this season. So Butler has that versatility offensively, and Anya Savage leads them. That's why they've been the bridesmaid to Georgetown. We'll see if there's another team. Now, I'm curious to see the Hoyas this weekend. They are at Villanova against a Villanova team that has some momentum, and then they're at Providence. Friars will make you work for what you get offensively. John, and another team who had a big start to conference play were the Creighton Blue Jays. They beat DePaul 2-0 for their first time ever. This Creighton team put it all together in non-conference play, but you still were asking, could they do it in Big East play? Because they've never qualified for the Big East tournament. They have a star freshman in Skylar Heinrich who has delivered. You think about her, you think about the Big East goalkeeper of the week in Lauren Sullivan. Right now, the Jays are a really formidable team that is right in the thick of things in the Big East. Now, John, Big East men's soccer is into week two of conference play for them. Three teams are left at 2-0. Who is standing out to you right now? 
St. John's and Marquette, and they're going to square off on Friday night at Valley Fields in a big one. The Johnnies to go into conference play and start out 2-0, that's a validation that they are for real and that they are deserving of the top 15 ranking. They had the win over NC State, but we didn't get a great sampling beyond that in their non-conference slate. They've proven themselves. So now I'm interested to see Skage Siemensen, Tani Olawashi, that star-studded attack go up against Marquette's Jackson Wayman. The redshirt freshman keeper is going to get tested on Friday night, but a big opportunity for the Golden Eagles. They went to Xavier and won. That's a tough place to win. I'm shocked that Xavier's 0-2 in this league. So I'm really paying attention to Marquette hosting St. John's opportunity knocks for the Golden Eagles because three of their next four in conference play after this game Friday night will be on the row. You have got to treasure your home games. I think for Marquette that's important, and I think for Seton Hall it's really important against Creighton on Friday night. That's an opportunity. If the Pirates want to make a move in this league, they have got to try to take advantage at home. Now, John, how about Georgetown? They're fifth in the country right now. They've only given up five goals all season. And speaking of freshmen, <laughs> their freshman goalkeeper, Thomas R Romero, has four wins on the season. He's only let two goals get by him. I watched Romero play in the USL over the summer. So he was already getting some big time spotlights. And now this kid's come in as a freshman and just delivered in the biggest of ways. Georgetown has a lethal attack. They now have a freshman keeper who's getting it done. They are a legitimate college cup contender, and I think the reigning conference tournament champions deserve that idea that everybody's got to pursue them because until they let go of that trophy, it's Georgetown at the top of this league. Mm -hmm. Now, John, let's turn back to Marquette. The Big East mm. freshman of the week comes from the Golden Eagles this week. Christian Marquez, he has had a couple of fabulous last games, and I sat down with the freshman. We now welcome in the Big East Freshman of the Week, Marquette forward Christian Marquez. He scored his team's two game winners in their wins over Wisconsin and Xavier. Christian, the game winners were also your first two goals as a Golden Eagle. How exciting was it to score in that fashion? No, it was really exciting, especially the very first one. I took it off the bounce and I just, just smacked it right in the back of the net. And I thought it was like the best feeling in the world to get that first goal and just to keep going. Now, looking a little bit closer at your team's Xavier win, you were down 1-0. Your team came back to win it. How did your offense keep attacking? Uh, at halftime, our coach, he told us to keep going and to break him through, like, the, through the seams on the outside. And we just kept, kept, kept going through that, and we found the breakthrough. How big was it, not only to beat Xavier, but to beat the Musketeers on the road? To beat them at their own turf was especially like really tough for any opponent. And for us, we did it in our own style. So for us, it was really important. You just mentioned there a little bit, Christian, your own style. Also, after your team's win over Wisconsin, head coach Louis Bennett said that your team is dead set on playing your brand of soccer. So what is Marquette's brand of soccer? I believe that our brand of soccer is a brand of like keeping the ball and trying to break opponents through our own like passing style and having creating opportunities through like more uh, passing and breaking them down. So not just like chip and charge. How has your team, you're one of three true freshmen, Christian, to play this year. How have the upperclassmen on your team really taken you guys in and, and taken you under their wings? They've taught us all the ropes and all the strings throughout the Marquette, especially through athletics and schooling, so that we don't feel uncomfortable with the team and the situation that we're in, especially being as freshmen. How have they helped also build your confidence on the field? Oh, on the field, they always keep, keep talking to us, especially our captains. They always give us motivation, and they tell us to keep going and keep being ourselves. After your win over Xavier, you had mentioned that that win is helping your team build momentum. In your next conference game, your team is going to take on the St. John's Red Storm. What specifically are you looking to build momentum off of? Especially off of these last few games, how we're playing. We're trying to build momentum to, to not only be the underdog but in that matchup, but to overcome that matchup and overall win that game. Everyone has a pregame ritual. Maybe they're a little bit suspicious of some things. What's your pregame ritual? So my pregame ritual is always listening to music and taking a shower before a game. So my go-to playlist includes like 
Meek Mill, Drake, and all those good guys. Okay, I was gonna say that was gonna be my next question, and you even got it. Little little rap in there. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Christian, thank you very much for the time. Congratulations on Big East Freshman of the Week, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So many games for you to tune into this weekend on the Big East Digital Network. Volleyball, men's soccer, women's soccer, you're not going to want to miss it. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. For John Fanta, I'm Megan Caffrey. Enjoy the second half of your game. by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, metropolitan, and global university. We're at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We are under the lights as the sun is finally set in South Orange, New Jersey. Seton Hall Pirates right now with a 1-0 lead over the Creighton Blue Jays trying to give Johnny Torres his first ever career Big East loss. Let's take a look around the conference, though, from the week that was. And we've talked about it already, but Udai Tishori, a fantastic week with that golden goal winner against Tulsa as well as the two assists for this Creighton Blue Jays team. Not the only player honored. We'll get to that in just a moment. And Rafael Bustamante helped St. John's with their electric start to this season. They shut out Butler in a Big East victory, and they are about to tip off in a, a few minutes for their Friday night Big East action. Let's take a look at the other award winners in the Big East. And two Marquette players, a big victory over Wisconsin this week. And the goalkeeper, Jackson Wayman, as well as Christian Marquez, both getting awards. Marquez with a gorgeous game-winning goal against Wisconsin. Clean off the volley as well as knocking off their Midwest rivals in Xavier as well. Marquette, one of the powers in the conference. And let's take a look at the weekly honor roll including another Creighton player in Musa Kanga, as well as a Seton Hall starter in Stefan Elias, and of course, Derek Dotson, the Georgetown Hoya, who was held already today in a nil-nil draw with DePaul, a surprising result. Can Seton Hall do one as well here today as we take a look at what's already happened in this one. Andrea Borg has been electric so far in this game. This was a big save by Valdivia to keep his team in it. Surprising for Creighton. They haven't gotten the attack going. The best looks of the game coming off set pieces. They haven't gotten their possession play in the flow yet. And Carlton McKenzie came off the bench for his first goal of the season. The strength to hold off Conga, the skill to bring the ball down, the creativity to finish off the header. And, and Creighton was never able to get their attack going. The best look of the game, this one for Polot. As he ripped this shot and Nota tipped it just over the crossbar as we are ready to kick off the second half here at ONT Carroll Field on the Big East Digital Network. The Creighton Blue Jays on the road and they're all blues going left to right on your monitor. 
Seton Hall Pirates going right to left, trying to hang on to what would be a massive Big East Conference victory to help get them going in the right direction. Seton Hall with a win here would move into the top three in the Big East. That would be the perfect way for them to set themselves up going into this next run. Seton Hall Pirates head out of conference in the middle of the week to face off against Fordham. Then they go to Georgetown next week. Arguably the toughest game in the conference. And so three points here would be massive for the Pirates to set themselves up going forward. The Pirates still have trips to Xavier as well. Who are sitting in last in the conference right now after their 1-0 loss to Villanova earlier today. Villanova falling at Creighton in their last Big East game just a week ago at Morrison Stadium. For Creighton, a week off, maybe appreciated for Coach Johnny Torres' this side as they're dealing with injuries. A game canceled on Tuesday night against local rivals Green Bay as this one's clipped in. Knocked away by Nota. And now Borg will clear it. Over Creighton right now on a five-game winning streak including victories over Nebraska Omaha and a away win at Marquette. That double overtime, a thriller 4-3 over Tulsa and the 1-0 win against Villanova a week ago for Creighton. And they finish off on the road next week against Xavier before heading home for back-to-back -back games against St. John's and DePaul. The game everyone's circling, though, November 6th to close out conference play on the road at the Georgetown Hoyas. Two of the best soccer playing programs in the country. The belief in the way they play the game as well as the quality they show going head to head. But so much can happen from now till then. Saw last, last year how wacky the Big East can be. Creighton winning the regular season championship being knocked out in the first round of the Big East tournament and not qualifying for the NCAA tournament. A few years since they've been in the NCAAs. 2016 and 15, they made it to the third round, did Creighton. Some big victories along the way over UNC as well as University of Kentucky in those two years before losing in 2016 to Big East rivals Providence, who made a College Cup run. An attempt to shield out there. Right, Luve Fredrickson will earn a free kick for the Pirates. Expect Creighton to come out and be aggressive here in this game we saw on the road at Marquette. Coach Torres and his team come out of the halftime locker room flying. Both forwards pressing high and the whole team following them. Playing with their high back line, trying to force turnovers in the offensive half. Create some danger for the Pirates. McKenzie and Teebling starting the second half. I've been told CJ Teebling should be good for about 60 minutes in this game. So you could see him for the rest of this second half. Andrea Borg returning, as does Alseth here in central midfield, alongside Elias and Boot. In the back four remaining unchanged for the Pirates. For Creighton, they made a couple changes in the first half. Dominic Briggs remaining on here to start the second half for the Pirates. Engel King stays on here as well. So for Creighton, a lone man in Tor Trostin, who started the game not starting this second half. You could understand Briggs was aggressive in that first half, brought a spark off the bench. Keller stepping up here. Hugo Keller has had a big job at that left back spot. Bodadi flying forward from the fullback position. Briggs, as well as Engel King, are always going to give trouble to any fullback. Looks like a yellow card being shown here. 
to Dominic Briggs. For a play off the ball, you can see how upset Polat is. One yellow card shown in the first half. That was to Torborn Alseth. First yellow card of the second half here to Briggs. Something for these coaching staffs to manage here for the second 45 minutes. It's been a safe performance for all Seth in this one. To the feet of Teebling here. Battle with the freshman and Mitchell. Teebling able to get away. He's got blue shirts around him. Teebling with some space. And he gets all over that ball and skies it over the fence and out of the ONT Carroll premises. A little bit of a spark of what Teebling can bring. He's got skill with both feet, power to hold off defenders, and ability to accelerate in or out of possession. Now Creighton forced to go long off the goal kick. Tiblin can't bring that one down. Tashiro able to win possession. Mitchell here at the left center back spot, the freshman. Denver, Colorado native, was in the Colorado Rapids Academy when his family moved to Atlanta for work purposes. Joined the Atlanta United Academy. Actually made one appearance for Atlanta United 2 in USL action last year in their debut season in the second division. What an ability to bring a freshman in in Luke Mitchell who's played at that high a level against that type of competition. A USU 15 and 17 international in his young career. You expect will be a name on that team sheet for Johnny Torres pretty consistently over the next four years. Shiro to take this free kick. His service has been inconsistent so far in this game. He'll look to curl this one and drop it right inside that penalty spot in the middle of the box for one of the, his oncoming teammates to head in. No, it's off his line a little. Floated to the far post, headed down. The whistle went before the kick was even taken. It looks like Mike Stutt asked for Tashiro to wait for his whistle to take the free kick, so Tashiro will have to do it again. Has shown his hand a little bit. Drives this one to the same position. Headed down in the box and cleared away by O'Leary. And now the pressure put on. Congo finds Tashiro once again. Clipped over the top here. Badaudi. A chance to cross, pulls it back, and the shot off the crossbar. A beautiful opportunity from Hawkinson. He's found no space in this game. He knows exactly what's going to happen when his fullback, Eunice Badadi, gets forward. He trusts him. He makes the run for the pullback. Hits it first time. And just inches away from a wonder goal to equalize here. So a warning shot across the bow for the Pirates to open this first half. Excuse me, open the second half. Sitting on a one goal lead against the preseason pick second team in the Big East in the Creighton Blue Jays. Picked almost unanimously just behind Georgetown coming into the season. For Creighton, a good start to the season. 6-2-1, two 2-0 and one. Two and oh in Big East play. 1-1-1 one, one and one on the road. A sole loss coming against top five opposition in Wake Forest. Well, many believe could be the best team in the country. And that coming in the first week of the season. Blue Jays have been almost perfect since then. 
They were not perfect in the first half. Now you're starting to see the Creighton team you expected in possession here. Good work from Espelanta there. Gets it wide. Opportunity to cross. And the offside flag goes up against Engel King. Espelanta, Espeleta, excuse me, has gotten more and more comfortable. He's enjoyed the freedom Johnny Torres gives his attacking triumvirate. And the ability to just float off those wings. Whoever's playing underneath Hawkinson, as well as Hawkinson himself, allowed to float, find the ball, find the game, not restricted to stay wide at any point, especially with how, with how high those fullbacks get to fill in that space. And Espeleta has been dangerous so far in his sophomore year. Gibson here. Trying to start the attack. Seton Hall laying off, not pressing too high. Now Tiebling puts a little light pressure on and Seton Hall starts to extend their line of confrontation. This one played into space though for Congo. And Congo's first touch too long and into the safe hands of Andreas Nota. Musa Congo, Johannesburg, South Africa native. Coming in from Tyler Junior College, four assists, leads the team from that left back spot. Played most of his career at Tyler at left midfield. But Coach Torres said, I need someone I can trust at that left back role. And Congo's been that man here in his first year at Creighton. Valdivia under pressure. Now Badaudi, he's not able to find a teammate. Well done by Borg. Tiebling cuts in, takes the shot. And Valdivia able to get over the top of that one. But a bad moment there from Eunice Budadi as he turns off. Didn't have an easy option and kind of just gave up on the play. Hawkinson now in open space, surrounded by white shirts. Fortunate to see that one get into the hands of Nota. As Fredrickson was intent to let that one run for his goalkeeper. Mackenzie, the lone goal scorer in this one. Will it hold up for the Pirates? Are there more goals in this one? About 30 or so minutes to play here under the lights. At the refurbished O&T Carroll Field, brand new turf to play on. New stands for the fans as well who have packed it here to see their home side. Seton Hall now. Looking for back-to-back -back Big East Conference wins. Hawkinson, beautiful ball, and it's blocked by Fredrickson. Espeleta breaking in on goal, set up perfectly by the leading goal scorer in Hawkinson. And Fredrickson coming across the box, showing his defensive instincts at times. He looks more like a defensive midfielder the way he plays that center back role. Lurking, waiting for opportunities to step rather than holding the back line, but it worked out perfectly there for the Pirates. Briggs, his cross blocked by Borg and Nota saves it. What a battle it's been down that wig between Dominic Bo Briggs and Andrea Bork. First substitute of the second half getting ready to come on here. Looks like it will be for the Creighton Blue Jays. It'll be Diego Dutil, Santiago Chile native in his first year in the college game. Right now, Johnny Torres trying to pull some strings and find some life for his team. On the flip side, Andreas Lundberg's going to respond by bringing on back on two starters in Vittorio Argeri. 
as well as Camille Corriecci. Two Europeans will come on in place of Teebling and McKenzie. It'll be Engel King who comes off for Creighton. McKenzie and Teebling came on for this pair in the first half. And the big moment from McKenzie was the difference. Teebling still walking off the field as we've continued play. Johnny Torres not happy with that, and you could understand why. Teebling still making his way back from the broken foot. Now healthy, but still needs to reach that peak level of match fitness to be effective throughout his minutes. Toshiro here with space, lines up the shot, and bangs it off. On the shoulder there of Alseth. Argeri was good up top in the first half. The Italian holding the ball up and linking up with his teammates. As Borg wins back possession for Seton Hall and then complains that his jersey's being pulled a little bit to our fourth official, Greg Moss. Espaleta. Can't find a teammate in Keg Keller. Just blast that one up into the night sky. Argeri there. You see his composure and technique. Borg beats the first man once again. Charging in. Looks to put an early cross in. Knocked away by Mitchell. Andreo Borg. Might be undefeated in 1v1 battles in this game offensively. The Maltese. The clock will be held here. He does not seem to fear anyone when in possession. Ajeri trying to find Keller's feet. Deflected Borg now beats the first defender, held off by Briggs. And Briggs will wing possession. Good battle there between Borg and Briggs. It's been fun to watch so far in this one. Got to believe the scouting report coming in to Seton Hall now. He's going to have Andrea Borg pretty high on the must-watch list. Big switch there from Polat to the feet of Congo. Congo can't find a teammate. And it's not been fluid right now for Creighton. They're normally... When in possession, they're flush with options. And right now, they've got their arms out looking for teammates. Can Creighton find the tempo and the pace to their possession here at some point in this second half? And the Pirates continuing to control central midfield as the flag goes up. Oh, Jerry just going a little too quickly. David Goss here on the Big East Digital Network. Thanks for joining us for this college soccer matchup. On the men's side, Georgetown and DePaul already playing to a nil-nil draw earlier today. Villanova knocking off Xavier 1-0 in Big East action. A couple games kicking off right now across the conference. This one will go out for, excuse me, it'll be a free kick or a throw in coming. See the Hall's getting ready to make another change. Ferdinand Solberg will come on for the Pirates. Well, Dowdy back in possession. Created the best chance of the second half, setting up Hawkinson. Gibbs there battling. Center back does enough. Space here. Espaleta unloads, and it's just wide of the far post. You could see if he just got an opportunity, he had it lined up. Hits that low bouncing ball as he strikes through it. Makes it so tough for Nota. 
Just not able to find the inside of the post. So the substitution made as Hugo Keller comes off in place of Ferdinand Solberg. It'll be a like-for-like -like change at that left back spot. Solberg, an upperclassman veteran as it feels like Badaudi and Briggs have started to get a little more momentum in the attack down that side. So seeing all coaching staff trying to get some water on that fire before it engulfs them. Badaudi has been more dangerous here in this second half. Jerry keeps possession, boot goes wide. It'll fall to the feet of Mitchell who handles it well. Now a little bit more movement in this Creighton attack here. Odaudi back into the feet of Polat. Switching to the feet of Mitchell. Change of the point of attack here for the Blue Jays. Seton Hall getting numbers behind the ball here. They said before the game, we don't want to sit too deep in a low block because of the way this Creighton team plays in a 4-4-2. You can stay closer to their lines in midfield and get enough pressure on. You just have to be clean in your lines to not allow easy balls to break through for Hawkinson to run onto. Danger here as Seton Hall starting to drop deeper as Espaleta and Toshiro start to find chances on top of the 18. Badaudi floats that one in. Take it on the far side beautifully. Cross comes oh, in. Good. And Briggs could not get his foot around that one. It's the first moment we've seen from Dutil off the bench. As Algeri does well to keep possession for the Pirates. Jerry showing why Coach Lindbergh wanted to get him back on the field here to help hold this lead. Creighton's look better here in the second half, but we still haven't seen that attack on all cylinders yet here at ONT Carroll Field. Elias putting the effort in. And the reason he's been given the captain's armband in his first year at Seton Hall. NC State transfer. Big tackle in midfield there. Ball over the top, it's a foot race. And it's won there by Valdivia. Good read from the Californian. to get off his line, otherwise Corriecci was in on goal 1v1. Right now Creighton Starting to push their numbers a little higher. Seton Hall seeing a little bit of a threat on the counterattack. Polat pulling the strings in midfield and Seton Hall recognizing the comfort level right now for Creighton. Alex Pizetsky getting ready to come on. A body goes up in the box, shot, pushed off the crossbar, and cleared away. Yunus Budadi knocked down in the box. And off the back of that, Andreas Nota makes his third big save of the game to keep the Pirates ahead. Budadi claiming it's a penalty kick here. It was Dutil with the shot, and Nota just getting enough of that one to tip it off the underside of the crossbar. Creighton knocking on the door. Can they break through? Corner kick coming here for the Blue Jays. Floated into the far post. Gibbs can't get over that one. And Dutil now back on the ball. Knocks it all the way back for Congo. Everyone in the box to defend here for the Pirates. No one to release the pressure though means Polat will get right back on the ball here. No pressure on this Creighton back line. Mitchell floating wide. 
Budaudi trying to get forward. Creighton now will reset their lines here off that corner kick. And now Mitchell flying forward on his right foot. Goes wide for Briggs. Gets by the first defender. Briggs puts the cross in. Knocked down in the box. Still alive. And Creighton can't put it on frame. Dutille. An impact sub here in the second half. For Johnny Torres, his side hits the underside of the crossbar. And a big opportunity there that he can't get over. You see the frustration there for the Chilean. Dutille out of what has become a promising program in the Berkshires called Blackrock FC. A USL League Two team on all the way through to a youth academy run through about 50 prep schools littered across the Great Lakes and the Berkshires in upstate New York as well as Michigan and Ohio pulling players from all across the country including last year's high school player of the year and of course one of the best players in the Big East down at Georgetown in Achara Jack Harrison and Zico Lewis both out of that academy as well. Dutil, part of what's become a formidable BlackRock FC presence in the college soccer and soon to be professional soccer ranks. A name to watch out for. Throw in coming here. Solberg brought on to try and slow the right side of that Creighton attack was not able to do it on that last play against Briggs. Solberg not any easy options. He'll go all the way back to Nota. This is Creighton at their best. Stepping to pressure man to man. That ball went from the end line on their own goal all the way back to Nota. Espaleta, his presence growing in this game. As I said, given that license to come off the wing and find possession. Congo back to Mitchell. Gibbs out wide for Polot. And that one blocked. The Big East Student Athlete Advisory Committee has partnered with the Headstrong Foundation to raise funds and awareness. Founded by former Hofstra lacrosse student athlete Nick Kolaluri, the Headstrong Foundation offers financial, residential, and emotional support to families affected by cancer. Kolaluri was diagnosed with diffuse large B cell non Hodgkin's lymphoma and passed away in 2006. To learn more about the Headstrong Foundation and to donate, visit www.biggies.com slash headstrong. Great work being done by the players across the Big East Conference. Great future athletes, but many future leaders both in the United States and around the world coming out of the Big East Athletics. And one of the great programs is that Headstrong Foundation. Seton Hall Pirates here. Trying to get a signature victory to open up this season's plays. Valdivia handles that one. First half goal from Carlton McKenzie. The lone strike in the 33rd minute. His first goal of the year assisted by James Boot, the freshman out of Bournemouth. South of England. Picking up his second career college soccer assist. And Creighton, they've started to turn the screws here in the second half. Hawkinson now breaks into the box. He's had a quiet game. Uses the decoy from the run outside of him. Floats this one to the far post. Headed away by Tremonti. Collision on the top of the box. The ball still alive. Somehow Tashiro knocked down there. Got back up and into the play. Andrea Borg knocked over there. 
Gonna stop with a whistle here as Yunus Budadi is holding his head. So safety from our head official Mike Stutt. Carlton McKenzie, our goal scoring hero right now, up on the sideline, ready to come on at the next substitution. For the Creighton Blue Jays, it does not get easier for them coming off of this game. After this one, they stay on the road to head to Xavier. That one on the Big East Digital Network. They'll then play currently ranked St. John's as they host them in DePaul in back-to-back -back games. They then head to Providence, one of the favorites in the Big East. They host Butler, and after that Butler game, as I said, on November 6th, they close out conference play on the road at Georgetown, which is one we've all earmarked. So that'll be a fantastic soccer game. But also, it'll mean so much for the Pirates leading at this point in the game where they're at becomes almost a must win game. They have non-conference action against Fordham midweek. Then they go to Georgetown. What is going to be a brutal game down in Washington, D.C. Another midweek non-conference matchup against Hofstra before they have the opportunity to host Butler and then travel to Xavier. The New York, New Jersey rivalry game will be on October 26th against St. John's here at ONT Carroll Field. Hey, you don't get to talk to him either. Johnny Torres right now in a conversation with Mike Stutt. And Seton Hall looks like we'll make two substitutions off the back of this. Sean McLeod as well as Carlton McKenzie will come on. So a little United Kingdom introduction. There's no to blast that free kick long, but out. And returns possession to the Blue Jays. Creighton started to create chances. Dominic Briggs and Eunice Budadi have been the danger men down the right wing for Creighton. Does the breakthrough exist for them? Soldberg waiting too long on the ball. And these two teams clawing for this one. And possession will go in favor of the Pirates. It'll allow them to make this substitution. So Sean McLeod, the Notre Dame transfer, and Carlton McKenzie, our goal scoring hero so far, will come on. Andrea Borg coming off, as well as Camille Corietchi. Quiet game for Corietchi. McKenzie immediately draws a free kick. And you see Eden O'Leary coming into your picture just now, coming forward. As Tashiro has had an eventful game so far. He's been down on the ground a number of times. He's taken a cleat to the thigh. Been knocked over in the air as well. Now getting into the wall with Dutille. Soldberg. McKenzie, the big targets alongside Eden O'Leary here. As the substitute, McLeod will take this one. And Tashiro down on the ground behind the play. So our head official, Mike Stutt, has the option to come over to the sideline and take a look at a replay here to see if there is any violent conduct or unbecoming behavior off the ball. So he will ask our producers for the views and the replays that he wants. There is no VAR, no video assistant referee in these games, but our head official Mike Stutt does have the option to come over and check to see if there was any sort of dangerous play off the ball here. He can look to see if there was violent conduct, so he's checking to see that play off the ball. We saw Yudai Tashiro Rolling down, rolling around the play. And Mike Stutt has made his decision. He doesn't see anything inappropriate there, so he will continue play. Fortunate here for Seton Hall to get away from that one. Free. And Mike Stutt now can restart play.
So we'll restart here with this free kick. It'll be McLeod to take this one. The Scottishman transferring over from Notre Dame, part of 12 additions to the program coming into the year here for Andreas Lindbergh. Right now it's the returning man in Carlton McKenzie with the difference. Can McLeod help double the lead here for the Pirates? Give them a little breathing space. He serves this one in low and hard. Headed away by Hawkinson. Picked up by Pizetsky. Polat trying to work his way out of his own box. Turns it over in a dangerous spot. Pizetsky now into the feet of Elias. McKenzie looking for the one, two. It's turned over and cleared eventually by the freshman Mitchell. The defending there from Creighton under pressure. Tashiro, the one man press out of midfield. Is able to turn that ball over from Nota. And Polat, just trusting he'd have a teammate there. Played that one wide. First video review of the game. Nothing to see there for Mike Stutt. So we are still playing 11 v 11. Here at ONT Carroll Field. David Goss alongside you here on the Big East Digital Network. It's been a good game between these two teams for Seton Hall. They'd love to come away with three points here, but the performance has been strong against one of the top teams in the conference. They've made it hard for them in possession. They've been smart and clean in their own possession and dangerous across the field. It's been Borg at times, but it's been McKenzie as well. Argeri's been bright in this one. Steven Elias hasn't been as dangerous in the attack, but he hasn't needed to be. It's allowed him to sit a little deeper and help cover in central midfield alongside Pazeski, Boot, and Allseth. For Creighton, we've seen the quality, but this is a team that strength is their ability across all 11 positions to have no weaknesses. I haven't seen them be as sharp as you'd expect. Elias in the battle there between the two captains. He comes away with it. Algeri looking for the through ball to Elias. He's got a teammate running alongside him, and it's handled there by Budadi. Great recovery run from the fullback, not to leave his center back on an island. Dangerous moments there. And finally, Valdivia gets that one away. Elias trying to turn in field. He goes down, no call made. The crowd not happy with it. But the Blue Jays looking to go the other way. Hawkinson almost got away from O'Leary there. Boot now into the path of McKenzie. The goal scorer looks to hit it early. And he's not able to wrap his foot around that one, whether it was a cross or a shot. And you see the replay there. Elias maybe going over a little too acrobatically, a little too easily there. And that allowed Mike Stutt to wave him off. CJ Tiblin coming on in place of Argeri, who I think has been very good in this game. To Teal coming off. You see the frustration on his face. He knows he could have had a goal in this one. The drive that was tipped off the underside of the crossbar. And then the open opportunity in the box that he never got over. Two of the best looks of the game for the Seton Hall side, excuse me, for this Creighton side. Right now they are staring down the barrel as we enter the final 10 minutes of this one. Can Creighton up the tempo here? Can they force a mistake from the Pirates? Seton Hall's look dangerous now. Off the counter in the second half. You've got to think there's another goal out there in this one. Whether it's to make it 2-0 or 1-1. Soldberg safely puts that one out. Across into the Hudson River. A deep throw in here for Creighton. 
Butadi, considered one of the most well-rounded and pro-ready players in the Big East, as shown here in the second half. So now Polat steps forward. Budadi trying to beat the first man. Solberg stands up to that one. Up the line for Tiebling. Looking for Elias. Turned over to Tashiro. Tashiro somehow able to keep possession. And he's frustrated with Elias and Tashiro. He's been kicked, he's been pushed, he's been pulled all game. But he's got to find a way to level his head and find a moment of brilliance here for his team. We've seen him from a similar spot drive the ball to the far post for an on-running teammate. Can he hit this one inside just a little more to allow either Mitchell or Gibbs to come, Gibson to come on this one with some power and some speed. Yudai Tashiro, the reigning Big East Offensive Player of the Week, steps up to this free kick here. It'll be Tashiro to take. He floats this one in dangerously. Knocked away by O'Leary. Pola trying to keep it in. The attack, Espeleta now on the ball. Beautiful one-two. Elias sticking with the Costa Rican. And knocked away finally by Pazetsky. And Tashiro keeps it in the attack. It's all hands on deck here for the Pirates. In the closing few minutes of this one, leading 1-0 against the preseason second ranked team in the Big East. Briggs, 1v1, trying to get back to the end line. And Soldberg puts that one out. It'll be a corner kick coming here. Can Creighton make one of these set-piece opportunities count? Hit low to the top of the box. Pull out now looking for the far post. Tiebling wins the first header all the way across the box. Solberg wins the second one. And then McLeod puts it out to midfield. Good idea there from Creighton to change the point of that set piece. As it's been all night, that final second of quality not there. Congo gets by the tackle, puts this one across the box. And Solberg puts it out for a corner kick. Torborn all Seth is getting ready to come back on for Seton Hall. The veteran defensive midfielder. But first it'll be another corner kick here. Tashiro, he went short last time to the top of the box on the ground. He floats this one into the far post. Nota comes, can't catch it cleanly, and then pounces on the loose ball. Andreas Nota may not be the biggest player in the conference, but his coaching staff has talked about his bravery in the air in those moments when his team needs him, and he stepped up there. McKenzie's first goal of the season, standing up right now as the winner for the Pirates. Tremonti can't work his way away from Polat. We saw the substitution not made yet, so Elias still on the field, but he will be coming off in place of Allseth. Tremonti goes long. Tiebling in a foot race. Gibson's gonna take that one down easily. To the feet of Budadi. Dottie thought Briggs was gonna come back for the ball. And now another ball over the top for Teebling. See in the hall, not showing the composure. They've had most of this game in possession. And they've got a great luxury in their ability to use CJ Teebling over the top, but you don't want it to become a crutch for this team as they've been brave and smart in possession throughout. Andrea Borg getting ready to come back on here as well. 
has all Seth. Chance down the middle here. Hawkinson and the flag goes up. Hawkinson has had one good look the entire game. And for the leading scorer for the Blue Jays, it's been a frustrating night for him and his teammates. And that's to the credit of the Seton Hall Pirates. They've been disciplined in possession. They've been disciplined in defense. They've stayed tight to the Creighton players when they need to. They've stepped off into two clean banks of two when Creighton's knocked it around their back line. And they've pressed a little at times to make it difficult for Creighton as well. Oh, will make their substitutions now as they've got five more minutes to hang on here for back-to-back -back Big East victories. So Elias comes on as well as the goal scorer McKenzie. McKenzie still coming back from an injury as well. Five minutes here. Seen Hall to try and hang on. The last time Seton Hall won back to back Big East games, it started with a victory against Creighton here in South Orange, New Jersey. It was followed up with a win against DePaul. A week later, it'll be the opposite here. If they're able to hang on, it was a victory against DePaul in the last game, two to one. It's a one zero lead against Creighton. Do the Blue Jays though have the ability to ruin that for the Pirates? Hawkinson looks to turn and he can't find anything on that shooting opportunity. It's been a night of frustration for his side be a night of jubilation for Seton Hall. It's been two years since they've won back-to-back -back conference games. Andreas Lindbergh up off his bench alongside his assistant Jeff Mateo. I believe they're just a few moments away from a big win here. Tremonti now flying forward to the feet of McLeod. Back over for Tremonti. Polat brings it down to Shiro. Restarts the attack for Creighton. Gibson into the feet of Briggs. Is there a hero out there for Creighton's side to Shiro. Beautifully done to get into the feet of Espaleta. Espaleta's movement in the second half has been one of the sparks for Creighton when they've gotten any danger in the attack. The big switch is on here for Budazi if they can find him. They skip him into the feet of Briggs. Briggs surrounded by white shirts. Pazetsky can't keep possession. Space here. For Creighton on the top of the box, Budadi can't find a teammate. And Soldberg earns the free kick against Briggs. Creighton didn't hit that switch early enough to Budadi to get him in a 1v1 situation. On the reverse side, and by the time he got there, Seton Hall back line. Been able to adjust and get in front of the ball. Pazetsky has been in and out of the starting lineup. We've seen some big spot minutes here. Andrea Borg tries to get in front of the play and slow the game, as is Pazetsky, and we'll see if there's a yellow card coming here. And it will be for Alex Pazetsky for knocking that ball away. For Mike Stutt. His third yellow card of the game he's had to give out. We are under two minutes left. Seton 
Oh, Pirates. Still sitting on the 33rd minute lead given to them by Carlton McKenzie. Off the bench in this one. Still returning from injury. He's done all he's had to for his team in this one. Can they hang on? To Shiro and to the feet of Polat. Espeleta down the wing for Briggs. 1v1 now. Briggs has been dangerous all game. His cross knocked down and cleared away by O'Leary. Seton Hall back line very deep right now. Polot space to spray that one wide. Congo, his cross knocked down. It'll be a corner kick coming. Not much time left here for Creighton. Trostin will take this one. Got the start here today. Curls it into the near post, headed away by Solberg as we get south of one minute left to play in this one. The Pirates looking for back-to-back -back conference victories for the first time in over two years. Last time it started with a win over Creighton, followed up with a win over DePaul. We're gonna reverse that here. And Andreas Lundberg's second year as head coach. That's a big moment there as Borg earns the free kick. He's been electric all game for the Pirates. Nota has stepped up with three massive saves. Pushing one over the crossbar and two off the post to keep his team both level and then ahead. As Tashiro's clearance goes off a teammate and out for a throw in and we enter 10 seconds and that'll be it. The Seton Hall Pirates will get back-to-back -back conference wins for the first time in over two years as they will knock off the preseason pick second team in the Big East. And for Andreas Lundberg, one of the signature victories of his young career in the NCAA Division I and as head coach of the Seton Hall Pirates. A 33rd minute goal from Carlton McKenzie. The difference in this one, but for the Pirates, it wasn't just the result, it was in the performance. They controlled play throughout the first half. A well-deserved lead. And they bent at times, but didn't break in the second half. They were dangerous on the counterattack, And they found their moments to get in possession. A ma massive victory for the home side. And the refurbished ONT Carroll Field will be back in just a moment with a couple of words from the winning coach, Andreas Lindbergh, here on the Big East Digital Network. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com.
A big win for Seton Hall at home against Creighton. Andreas Lundberg, the winning coach here. A signature victory maybe for you in just your second year. What does it feel like? Great. Yeah, super happy. Creighton is a phenomenal team, and to be able to win it, you know, at home um, it means a lot. We're 2-1-1 and in the Big East now, so I think we're definitely in the mix. This is a team in Creighton that normally dominates possession, creates opportunities. First half, you guys were the better team. What was the key for your side? I mean, we came out flying, I thought, you know, first five minutes, even the bench, you know, we were trying, we got a couple of corners, got momentum early on. I thought they were not their usual self in the first half, uh, you know, but we did also a very good job in, in the first half, and I think we just certainly were up one nil at halftime. Second half, different story. You know, we were hanging off the ropes and just defending, and Andreas Nota makes a couple of big-time saves for us to win it, so very, very pleased. You've got a couple of attackers coming back from injury. Carlton McKenzie is one of them. What does he bring to this team? What do you make of that goal? Yeah, I mean, it's an individually great goal. You know, he's super athletic and fast, and he can score goals. This was his first time uh, this season. But both him and Jerome, they just gives us, you know, a, a different way of playing. And, and uh, I think we're just going to get better for every game. You mentioned the set you up in the Big East. You've got a couple big games coming up, but how do you feel this group is going forward? Ah, good. Like I said, I think we're getting better and better. Uh, we didn't get the result early on, but we played some tight games down in Florida. But I think we learned a lot in those games to get good competition. And without those games, I don't think we're going to be able to pull this one off. So, uh, you know, we got Fordham here on Tuesday, and then we go to Georgetown, which I heard is a really easy place to get a win. So I'm looking forward to that one. I mean, Georgetown is big time, you know. So it's, it's my first time there, so I'm excited just to go and play. And, now we, uh, we, we're going to keep going forward. Back-to-back -to -back conference wins for the first time in over two years. Coach, congratulations. Thanks for wasting time with me. <laughs> well, Seton Hall gets the 1-0 win at home, and as Coach said, they'll play Fordham in the midweek and then head to Georgetown next weekend. A huge moment for them. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch with us here on the Big East Digital Network. All right, I'll see you next time. Good luck in Georgetown. <laughs> Thank you.